and welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here with us today. My name is Bharati, and this is Lorna, and it is our joy to be with you. So, uh, you know, I say this every time I do a talk, but I love this particular topic. Um, <laughs> how could I not? I just was, um, you know, there's so many ways you could look at each of these things, and with, with the readings, with the affirmation, and, but what I was thinking about in particular was just the very first words in the, from the Bible, um, ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. Because this is such a promise for us that, you know, here we are. And when we think about the, the cosmos, all that is, it's overwhelming. I was watching a little clip on Facebook the other day that went on and on, but it was showing the earth, you know, and then we know that we on the face of the earth are so little and minuscule, but then it was showing our earth compared to other planets, to the sun, to our solar system, to um, whatever comes next, you know, and on and on and on. And then here we are, and you just sometimes think, whew, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we that God is mindful of us? But there's our promise. No matter what our condition, where we are in life, ask and it shall be given. Now, that can, can kind of be a two-edged sword because sometimes we ask for things that don't turn out to be the best things for us. And you know what? Those are also given. It's one of those laws of the universe. Whatever we put our attention on, whatever we desires we have in our heart, those things will, in fact, come to us. And one time when um, Swami Kriyananda was with Yogananda, and Yogananda, <laughs> and he was, Yogananda was saying that to them. It's like, you know, every desire has to be fulfilled. And he was going, Oh my gosh, you mean even an ice cream cone you wanted when you were a child? And he said, yes, even that. So it really um, behooves us to be cautious in what we want, what we put our attention on. You might remember if you're old enough, there was a, a big thing, I don't know, it was maybe in the 80s or 90s, a um, lot of self-help books written about ways to get what you want in life. And I remember there were the things where you'd make like a big poster or you'd visualize what it was you wanted, like your car, you know, and you'd, you'd get in your mind what, what kind do you want, what make, what model, um, what color, you know, how do you want the upholstery to be, <laughs> what kind of mileage do you want it to get, the whole thing, you know. And then you, you would attract that to you. And... I had a little bit of experience with that. I, I don't know, I just never could quite get behind all that. Mm -hmm. But um, in fact, a couple times when I was doing, a, what do you call it, vision board, vision board with a bunch of people and it was really fun and beautiful and inspiring. But at the time I had, this was some years ago, and um, I didn't have a laptop computer. I had an old desktop, but of course that's really big, you can't exactly take it with you. So among all the other things on my vision board, I found a really cute picture of a little laptop computer and on this, the screensaver was some green leaves floating around and I just thought it was so pretty and everything so I stuck that on there. And without really giving it much energy or thought, but it was only about a week later I was living over in the Ananda community in the Vermont Hills area and one of the people who lived in the community walked up to me and he said, I have a computer for you. And uh, it turned out, it, it, you know, it was from his job and he didn't really need it or something. I don't know the story. But anyway, it was a MacBook Pro, which is something, you know, beyond what I would have been looking for anyway. Um, another time with my experience, these were... Um, so back in 2004, um, I had some blocked coronary arteries and I had to have bypass surgery. And so that was just kind of enough to think about, really. <laughs> but I also 
had a, like $5,000 deductible on my insurance and then paid 20%, you know, so I was going, whoa, you know, and I was working at the Living Wisdom School where the um, salaries are not excessively high. <laughs> and, and I just, but really what I thought at that time is I just totally put it in Divine Mother's hands. I said, I cannot even think about that at this time. I need to just focus on what's going on around me. And actually, what happened is, through, through a series of circumstances, I ended up with all the money that I needed with about $17 extra even <laughs> for, for all that. Now, fortunately, I didn't stop at putting my finances in Divine Mother's hands. I put the whole experience in her hands. And I'll tell you, when I think about it, it, not like it was a pleasant physical experience whatsoever, but at the same time, it was one of the most sweet times in my life because I felt as though I just were being carried along in Divine Mother's hands through the whole experience. So even when you're not, you know, I, I felt like I didn't exactly have one-pointed concentration at that time, but just... Um, symbolically putting myself in line with the divine energy, it took care of me just absolutely perfectly. So the, the thing with seeking, and when we turn our attention to the divine, to truth, whatever way you like to look at it, there's no way that you can't get it, because that's how it works. You know, there's just, you can't fail. It's a no-fail sort of system. <laughs> and so the, the whole thing to get started is just face in the right direction. Start putting out your, your prayers, your calls, your soul calls toward the divine. The first song that we sang, that the choir sang at the beginning, gives you hints on how to get started with this and just lift your heart. And then in the song you're going to hear after this talk, which is so incredible, it, it's um, in the temple of Isis. And the, the words, you know, still your mind if you want to pray. Still your heart if you want to pray. Still your soul if you want to pray, and then await the coming. In our reading, it was talking about the Bhagavad Gita part, saying, when the mind fickle and restless, I don't know about you, but man, my mind is <laughs> excessively fickle and restless, wanders from its concentration, then withdrawing it resolutely, spurning every, I love the, just the words of this, spurning every distraction, no matter how alluring, and bring it back again and again under the control of the self. The first technique we teach here at, at uh, Ananda, the first is meditation technique, is a technique of concentration called Hang Sa, and what you're basically doing is watching your breath, mentally doing a mantra as you breathe in and out. And then, that's, that's really all. So it's very simple. For most of it, it's not that easy because the mind, fickle and restless, whoosh, <laughs> off here and there, but just always bringing it back, bringing it back to center. And what I often cling to in these times when I'm so restless, I have such a hard time controlling my mind, I'm going to refer back to a Bhagavad Gita reading from probably April or so, because it's, it gives me a lot of comfort and hope. Cling thou to me, this is uh, Krishna representing God, the divine. Cling thou to me, class me with heart and mind, so shalt thou dwell surely with me on high. 
But if thy thought droops from such height, if thou beest weak to set body and soul upon me constantly, despair not. Give me lower service. Seek to reach me, worshiping with steadfast will. And if thou canst not worship steadfastly, work for me. Toil in works pleasing to me. For he that laboreth right for love of me shall finally attain. But if in this thy faint heart fails, bring me thy failure. So even when we're not accomplishing what we set out to do, we do our best and then we bring the whatever, whatever, whether it's success, whether it's constant focus and concentration, we bring it to God. And whether it's our failure, it doesn't matter because when you think about it, when in, that, in that bringing the failure, what are we doing? We're focusing back on the divine. So um, Yogananda said, no spiritual effort is ever wasted. When we do our best that we can to focus on the divine, to try to live in that energy, that consciousness, then in another part of the Bhagavad Gita, I'm going to look at this so I get it, the right words. Ah, to those who meditate on me, I make good their deficiencies and render permanent their gains. So even if we aren't able in any given moment to attain to the heights that we would seek for, as long as we keep seeking and we keep offering whatever we have, whatever we are in that moment to the divine, that will be enough. <laughs> One other thing that's just important to remember when ask and it shall be given, we've got a great, powerful, amazing line of gurus who've come specifically to help us, to give us techniques, to give us encouragement, to give us power to accomplish, to reach the heights. And we just need to remember to ask for their help, to be open to their guidance. And then everything will unfold as it needs to. I'm going to end with a reading from Whispers from Eternity. This is Yogananda's book. Yogananda. <laughs> Uh, prayer Demands and Poems, and it is just so wonderful. If you haven't read these, get a copy, read them often, because they're just so beautiful, and they bring your mind and your whole being into a state of greater resonance with the divine. Let me feel that thou and I art one. When the sparks of cosmic creation flew from under thy crucible of love, I danced with all the lights that heralded the coming of myriad worlds. I am a little spark of thy joyous cosmic fire. O oh, thou son of life, as thy nectar poured into the little cups of human minds, filled with molten liquid of vital sparks, they thought to contain thy golden infinity in the smallness of their human feelings. In each fragile, undulating mirror of human flesh, I see reflected thy restless dance of omnipresent power. In the lambent waters of life, I behold thy ever steady, almighty life. <clears throat> Teach me, Christ like, by the power of concentration, to still the restless storms of desire raging on the lake of my mind, stilling those waters. I lovingly behold thy unruffled face of cosmic stillness. Cause the little wave of my life to subside, that thy consciousness in me spread out to become thine own vastness. Let me feel my heart throbbing in thy breast, my feet moving with thy energy, thy breath breathing through mine, thy energy actively moving my arms, thy thoughts weaving all the thoughts in my brain. 
when I cry, thy soft sigh within me wakens me to thy joy. In thy playfulness, little bubble visions of thy creation dance flo float dancingly in the chamber of my dreams, which manifest in my sleep of delusion. Thy meteoric will courses through the skies of my own willpower. Make me feel that it is thou who art I. O oh, make me thyself that I behold my little bubble of self ever floating in thee. I'll have a moment of silence. <laughs> 